Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Patricio Galvelo. Everyone calls me Pato. I am an architect, and I am doing architectural visualization since the last 20 years, more or less. Uh, and this talk is about uh, architectural visualization pipelines using Blender. Um, sorry if I am a bit out of breath. I just came biking a bit late. So, um, this should, should move forward. Ah, that's it. So, a uh, short of introduction about myself. Uh, this presentation is about, uh, is about the pipeline, but a bit my transition from what is called as industry, industry standard 3ds Max V-Ray Corona, uh, how I tried to make the full transition to Blender, what we are doing now. So I am an architect since 2005, and I started, like almost everyone, doing architectural visualization uh, during the graduation process to make some money. Uh, but then I found this my, my passion to visualize projects. Um, so these are some of my works done, what we just know with the uh, industry standard software. Uh, projects, uh, this is London Bishop Gates. You can see the shard, uh, some Stockholm building. Uh, this was a project that we did uh, in the company internally to develop skills and, and just pick a subject. Uh, another London project that you can see sampled cathedral. Swedish office, uh, some retail building in New York. Uh, this was a city development in, in Sweden. So we made all the, the concept and the and the visualization, and it's a park on, on Sweden, too. And this was the building a bit close up. Uh, this is one of the tallest buildings in Stockholm nowadays. Uh, so the journey changed, changed into Blender. So I started to doing, doing some personal works to have fun, to uh, practice, to get used with the user interface uh, tools, because it's quite different, the champ. And, so uh, at that moment, I was by, based on an office on Prague. So we find that Prasadko, a funny word that is a little big. So we created this character uh, as just a fu for fun. Uh, then some ice cream inspirations, uh, Senna's helmet tribute. Uh, and then in the Prague office, I had a colleague that uh, she had a bunnies as pets, and I was pet sitting them sometimes, so I got inspiration. It was an easy shape. This was uh, meta balls. I'm just playing with that. Um, the same here, like using the same different environments to play, to, to learn stuff in Blender. Uh, some inspiration and playing with the grease pencil. Uh, and this, uh, I just found this. Uh, super nice add-on that just make the shape and just like unwrap it to to make it into seams like videos not playing scenes but here are the when we made like a real like teddy bears bunnies whatever and the real ones uh, some other projects that they are not playing but these some videos my my daughter playing with my nephew and some inspiration drawings so why not to make the change directly then it's like as, as I say, I started to play with Blender 2009, but uh, I think at that moment was uh, difficult just to make the sham because I didn't know the program just to full, go full production. So was, I was a bit afraid of troubleshooting and delivery time could be compromised and the delivery quality too, as you don't know exactly how to handle with all the tools. Um, so we started to use it, or I started to use it in the side studio, just um, with other colleagues. Uh, we started to use it for modeling, maybe cl cleaning the geometry. Uh, we use it a lot for camera matching and, and it's project that requires not much CGI. Uh, for example, here are some examples of camera matching. Uh, this one is like the, the retail part and the restaurant in the first floor. Uh, that was with Blender and then uh, this with the camera matching is very in FPI. That is a super nice camera matching standalone program. And then uh, Mark Kingsworth uh, made an add on for Blender uh, that is super handful. Uh, what was missing then? Uh, why not to make the change directly? 
Uh, mainly at that moment, Cycles was not developed as, as, as it is now. Uh, so there were not much libraries uh, available. Uh, we didn't have a good scatter system for stereo images and so on. Uh, so in the process of changing what, what tools came to help, uh, as I said, FPI, then there is a photographer add-on from Fabian that I use a lot because it uh, lets you have several cameras and then you have different formats. Uh, Archipack from Steph uh, Stephen Legger, like Scatter5, a lot of them. I, here you can say I will not mention all of them. Um, and then the assets that came that help a lot, like Chocofour, Polygon, Scatter5, presets, uh, all the materials from Polygonic, uh, B production, super nice material to work with. Uh, so the big leap, <laughs> we started to produce uh, something in Blender. So this was the best, the first project we did in the studio. It was like uh, from uh, an architectural studio. So we get the model from SketchUp and then we did everything in Blender. Uh, this was an uh, architectural competition too. We got the model from SketchUp and then everything is uh, uh, in Blender. The trees are from the Grob 3D, the ones in the left. Uh, super nice uh, software to play with. Um, here is like camera tracking. <laughs> so it's not, uh, here it is. So it's not working. Some product visualization, this uh, was a mock-up to play with labels. Um, and then uh, from this point, we started to produce 100% in Blender, uh, except we received the model, of course, from the client. So this is a residential project uh, uh, in a forest close to the sea. Uh, some of these interiors, they have uh, a lot of different units, so we have to represent them all. Um, this was a residential house that was more focused on, on the interior design, the look and feel, so we, we tried to achieve the mood that they wanted to do here, so it was rustic with a wood post. Uh, this is like cabins on a close to a ski resort, so this was a nice challenge to uh, we have drone footage, so we did a camera matching here, and uh, compared to Max, for example, it's super nice to, to play with different units that is the same. So you link them, you copy them, and then you modify one, and then you modify all of them. So that's compared to Max, is much better. Uh, some close-ups, residential house, uh, trying to play with the lighting, like just to represent the facade there too. Uh, this is a residential project that they wanted like um, evening mood, so we play with that. Another modern house, uh, completely different style, same architects though. Um, here is like a residential building we did uh, last year. It was challenging with uh, all the vegetation. Uh, these are from Terrascape, really nice sets of vegetation, super realistic ones some interiors and close-up detail shots of that building. And this is the same building, and um, this is to mention that with the um, uh, real-time rendering is super nice now. You're like, you're like a virtual photographer in the space. You go there, you move the camera, you, you choose, you play with the depth of field, and, and then you render the shots. Uh, this is another building close to my house in my city, close to the sea. Uh, here some camera matching too, some uh, we have a video of this one, but maybe for another presentation, uh, some detailed shots. And, and here, this one was last year too, was one of the most challenging ones. Uh, we have to resolve here we are how to fit everything in the GPU, uh, because it has a lot of vegetation, a lot of polygons to scatter, and we went greedy, because probably we could res have resolved this with uh, some vegetation maps for the grass, but uh, we keep it like that. And then it, we were struggling a bit just to fit everything in the 24 gigabytes of the memory, but at the end it worked. Uh, some close-up of this project, uh, some detailed shots too. Uh, this is a project we finished recently. It was, really, it was done really quickly, mainly in a week or less. Uh, some, some exterior images of that, that project too. And um, uh, this is another nice example. This is a building that this is a protected house. This is an old house from my city. So 
Here we tried several ways to approach how to represent it. Uh, we tried uh, photogrammetry, uh, we tried Gaussian splattings, but they were not working properly. It's a pity that there is still not something that solves how to import or use Gaussian splattings into Blender. There are some options, but none of them was working. So we finally decided to go with the, the model we received from the, from the architects, and we made some tweaks. Uh, some interior shots of that, of that project. Here the idea was to showcase the, um, the view to the sea that they have in the apartment units. Um, so this was done first half of this year. This is a Stockholm office. Uh, they made a refurbishment or they will, be a, uh, well, they will do a refurbishment of the whole building. Uh, it was a super fun project to work with. Uh, we received the model from Revit as IFC. We imported with a Blender Beam add-on that now is called Bonsai, if I am correct. And it was a lot of fun, a lot of back and forth, but uh, at the end they were super happy with the result, and we too. So, and this is the last work, actually, so I put it at the very end on the presentation, and this is like an apartment building we visualized uh, last year, uh, but then made, they made changes in the kitchen and in the interior design, so we did this in a super short of time, about four days, because we had a, they had a presentation, so we finished it uh, super quick. Uh, so we are happy with the result, that's we, why we are showing it uh, now. So. A bit of the process, uh, of course, this is a simplified version of what we understand as a process, but I think it's not the main goal of this presentation. It's more to show the work we can do on, on Blender for architectural visualization. But uh, basically, we receive the sets uh, model from the client. If we receive it like in format SketchUp, Revit, Archicad, then we use the importers for, for Blender. Uh, if we receive the DVC or floor plans and PDF, or whatever format, but it's not the model, we, we use the normal model in tunes in Blender and we use Archipack, that is a great uh, tool for architectural uh, stuff. Uh, after we have the model, of course, texture lighting, we play with the light to get the best uh, light possible for the image. Uh, then we put the prop sets, we render previews, uh, we do, of course, some post-production, but then we start the feedback rounds with the client. Uh, of course, it's uh, depending on the client, a lot of back and forth. Then we render the final, and then we do the post-production to go to final. Uh, this is a little Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, so as we render almost 99% of the renders uh, with the GPU, uh, we build kind of this setup that has two GPUs, one 3090 and one 4090. They are rendered together. It's, it's a pity that you cannot combine the RAM. Uh, it was before with the SLI, I think. Uh, but still, it's a good setup to render fast. So mainly the render times. Uh, average for a 4K image is around 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes it's much less, uh, but I don't want to promise anything. <laughs> so 20 minutes, I think, is a good average of, of that. Uh, sometimes it's failing, uh, but mainly it's working uh, super fast, super good. The only problem is just to fit, as I said before, uh, everything in the 24 gigabytes of the RAM. That's the only issue. Then in ti uh, render times is, compared to CPU, is like amazing. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the question. Is there something that is still missing? Uh, of course, there are a lot of things that could be missing, but I think that's for every software. Uh, so I think uh, basically we have everything what we need to do architectural visualization in Blender. Uh, uh, still, we need a kind of a lot of more people just contributing with assets, uh, more add-ons. I think what we have now is amazing, but if we have more, it will be even better. Uh, the conclusion is uh, why is not then industry standard for architectural visualization? Uh, I think it's uh, mainly a cultural thing. It's a matter of uh, our mindset that we are not used to 
related architectural visualization with the Blender. So I think uh, one of the reasons of this stuff, uh, this talk is just to show that even if it's far for the quality I will expect to have, I think we can achieve super good results doing architectural visualization in Blender. And I think if we start to do it, uh, probably more people will do it too. Uh, and I think that that will be really nice because it's a tool, a Blender is an amazing tool to do this. Uh, so our contribution is uh, we are developing, uh, as we started to do this some time ago, um, at that moment there were not so much asset collections, uh, so we started to build models for ourselves. Uh, in that came the idea just to build this library called Art TV that now is, uh, we are reaching about 600 models that we will release soon, like next week or two weeks. Uh, and it's a way to contribute to, to just to, for other people to have good asset quality uh, for just architectural visualization at the end is like kit bashing, right? So you put the, you, you make the structure, you put the light, you put the textures, and then you play with the collections. No one is going to do everything from scratch. Uh, so um, we were talking yesterday and I, and they say that, okay, we have really a lot of collections, but always the client is asking you the one you don't have, right? So it's good to have more, more material. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, here is the, my, my contact Instagram. Uh, so the, my personal for the work and the, the one from the collection. Uh, I want to thank uh, my family, my daughter, because she approved the pink slides. So that was important for me. Alex for all the support, uh, all the friends I made these last three years uh, in the Blender conference. Of course, the people doing Blender the Blender community, that is uh, an amazing way just to just make the champ and be sure that you're not alone. I mean, it's like you go forums, you go wherever, and then you feel a lot of support. And when you come here, like, you realize and you just finish the circle. And last but not least, uh, I think the important thing what may, may, made us good professionals on what we do is not the access to the tool, but what we would what we do with the tool, right? So I think that's, that's the potential of Lender that is giving you the tool. So it's up to you just to make good stuff with it. So thank you very much. That's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>